Me being the chosen one was like a blessing and exception. City known for homicide, majority depression. Grinding in the gym so I could live through the re What it do, YouTube? It's your boy, my man YC, and we back with another reaction today. We are watching the real importance of sports. You know, uh, TED Talk definitely, uh, definitely interesting. I, my, one of my favorite things, uh, one of my most interesting things for me to talk about and think about, you know, in conversation, things like that, is sports life microcosms, and really how sports, if if you do it the right way, and you know, it's just a lot of microcosms and comparisons that you can make from sports and compare it to real life. You know, a lot of things you can learn from sports you know, that allows you to, to learn from real life, you know? So, without any further ado, let's get into the video. I love sports. Me too. I've loved them from the time I was a young man. I loved them even though I didn't grow up in a sports family. I think I fell in love with sports because I saw it as honest. If you can produce, you get to play. Mm. And it was that simple. Ooh. I come to you today to talk to you about maybe an importance in sports that we haven't recognized before. I have been able to do a ton of things because of sports. I was able to represent my university. I was able to become an All-American. I won watches. I was in magazines. Wow. And all of that pales when we talk about the importance of what could be in sports right now. Historically, there's been four ways by, by which we raise men in this country. In the home, in the church, in the military, and in, in sports. sports. Interesting. Cultural changes have changed the mix on the importance of how those things work. In the home, Right now, one-third of American children, about 15 million children, grow up in a home with no father. Wow. That's a lot of young boys growing up without a daily example of manhood in their home. In church, census tells us that less than 20% of American citizens go to church, attend a church service, on a regular basis. And if social trends in America follow Europe like they usually do, by 2025, the number could be 12 or 13 percent of American citizens attend a church service on a regular basis. I'm surprised it's that much. Because of technology, cyber advancement, the current administration's desire to bring the number of active military down to its lowest point since World War II, 80% of applicants to the military get turned away. Not raising a lot of men in the military either. What we're left with is sports. Could be the last bastion by which we give the characteristics and the virtues mm. with which we raise men in sports. Where we learn the virtue of the huddle where you take north and south, east and west, conservative and liberal, black and white, you put them in the same huddle, you give them the same color jersey, you give them a common goal, mm. you let them sweat, tear up, and work hard together, Damn. and special things start to take place. Where we learn teamwork, community, fidelity, we care about each other, don't let each other down. The old coach's term that says, Teams that play for a great fan base win a lot of games. Teams that play for a great coach win a lot of games. Teams that play for each other win championships. I never heard that before. It's a concept we could use in our families right now. What about pride? Where I'm constantly reminded that pride is the worst of the seven sins. And I constantly have to remind people, unfortunately, I got a lot of it. Mm. But I don't think you get anywhere in this world without some pride, without some passion. I never heard of the seven sins before. Hold on, I want to I wanna Google that really quick. I want to Google that really quick. 
The Seven Sins. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony, wrath, and sloth. I know what I I know I don't know what wrath and sloth are though. Envy, lust, and greed. Wow. Damn. Pride, greed, lust, envy, gluttony. Wrath and sloth. Let's see. Reluctance to work or make an effort, laziness. Okay, let's look at wrath. Wow, that's interesting. Extreme anger. Chiefly used for humorous or rhetorical effect. He hid his pipe for fear of incurring his father's wrath. Hmm. Okay, cool. Let's move. Let's keep watching. Got some accountability, where pride for me means personal responsibility and daily excellence. Mmm. That's my pride. Damn. We talk about failure, the virtue from failure. Sports based in failure sometimes. Those under virtues that allow us to succeed in life because we've experienced some failure in other places. I wanted to be a national champion. I had been blessed enough to be an All-American. I'd done a ton of stuff, but I'd never been an individual national champion. We get to my senior year, we're at North Carolina State, and I have a shot to be a national champion in a number of events. I get second place, I get third place. So I'm All-American again, but I'm not a national champion. And that's what I wanted to be. We get to the four by four relay. I'm the anchor <laughs> and I want it on me. I'm the kid. I sat in front of my house with my Walter Mitty stories thinking I'm putting myself in places where I can be the hero. I counted down three, two, one and shot the basket. I wanted to anchor that four by four relay. We get down to the anchor and I'm waiting like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm waiting for my guy to bring me the baton. He gives me the baton, I take off running. I'm in third place by about 12 or 13 meters. Within the first 50 meters, I go past the guy in second place. Somewhere along the back straight, I pull up next to the guy in first place. And for the life of me, I have no idea why I don't go by him. My coach had always told me, if you get up next to him, you have to go by him and make him run your race. If you sit next to him, you'll end up running his. Interesting. I run tied with him for about 200 meters until we get to 50 meters to go. I'm closing in. About 40 meters to go, he starts pulling in front of me. And he's pulling a little further away from me. And finally, I'm getting the notion with about 10 or 15 meters to go that I'm going to get my team second place again. I was miserable. I was crushed. At that moment, it was one of the toughest things I ever had to experience. Wow. But you know what I learned from it? One, do what your coaches and your teachers and your parents tell you to do, because they usually know a lot more than you do. If I had done what I was coached to do that day, I win that race. Two, failure's not permanent. Failure's like a rain cloud, and sometimes it rains on you, and you've got to ride it out. And three, if you don't internalize it and you don't personalize it, you'll realize it's just a part of life and you will grow and become better for it. All those lessons I learned in sports to manage failure, to be in community, to understand uh, the characteristics of diversity, to understand the interconnected relationship between preparation and success. All of these virtues that we have learned in so many other places in life that seemingly we have to learn in sports now. Where are we going to get them from? How important does sports become? Former Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, probably more popularized for coining the phrase, 
clear and present danger. Also said, the place for any man completing all of his powers is in the fight. And I don't know if I'm completing all of my powers, but having the opportunity through sports to fight for the growth and the development of young people when seemingly every historic fixture around them is breaking is a fight that I'm honored to be in. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, uh, I definitely I definitely agree with a lot of what he said. You know, a lot of, most of the things I learned in my life have came from sports. I played sports a lot. I played organized sports a lot, you know, growing up from probably like six years old to <clears throat> my last year in high school, you know, uh, except, may except maybe sixth grade and then freshman year when I didn't make the team, but pretty much every other year in between I played sports and it's taught me a lot. You know, it's taught me the important, uh, one of the super important things it taught me is really just showing up every day. Like when you when you play sports, especially in high school, like if you're a kid, you get to get away with maybe missing a practice or being sick. When I was in high school, you couldn't miss no days. Like you couldn't, yo coach, uh, like you couldn't miss no days. And I think that that has a lot to do with the way that I developed, the way that I did, you know, the way even on date, bro, I remember I had, I, it, I, no no bullshit, bro. I feel like I was one of, I might have been one of the first niggas to get COVID. Low key, bro. Cause it was just like this feeling, like I feel like I couldn't really breathe. I felt like, I don't even know what the, I don't know what the, the, um, the symptoms are, but I just felt super sick for a whole weekend. I still had to play a game. You know what I mean, and I and I play and I played below average, but I still performed well enough to win. You know, but one of the main things sports told me was like you got to show up every day. You know, like especially Monday through Friday, and then even later in the year we started having Saturday practice. We couldn't like I couldn't. You know, you have to show up every day, no matter how you feel. That's one thing that sports has has really taught me. You know, and it's I've carried it through with, you know. A lot of other things that I've done and I'm attempting to do that through YouTube like you know there's a lot of days where I record and I don't really feel like it I don't really know what I want to record I don't know I don't know there's a lot of things I don't know there's a lot of things I don't feel but one thing I do know for certain no matter what it is that you do you have to show up every single day no matter how you feel no matter if you're depressed sad angry hungry you have to show up every single day and get what it is that you want to get. Um, obviously, the importance of, you know, being with the team and, like, playing, playing for other people is big, bruh. You know, and in life, sometimes you can't really do things for yourself. Sometimes you have to do things for other people. You know, sometimes, you know, when things that are important, you're, you, you aren't going to have the strength to do it for yourself. But sometimes, that's why a lot of people, when they have kids, a lot of dudes in the league... A lot of dudes, when they have a kid, bro, they start hooping. Giannis, Embiid, Fred Van Vliet, like a lot of dudes, when they get a kid, they start hooping, like, you know what I mean? So I think that a lot of times, you know, you do have to do things for other people and just learning how to play for each other. You know, I'm gonna play for you, you gonna play for me, and we gonna, we gonna play it out on the line for each other, you know? Um, so yeah, sports has definitely taught me a lot of different things, you know what I mean? Um, Obviously, consistency has a lot to do with showing up every day. Sports has definitely given me thick skin. You know what I mean? And a lot of times, especially nowadays in age, like, you know, people will, you know, sugarcoat things about themselves and not really be authentic with themselves. I knew from a young age, like, a lot of coaches will just be honest with you because there's no there's no time to, to navigate feelings, right? So if I'm playing basketball, right, and I'm not the best shooter and I take a shot that I'm not supposed to be, like, yo, Mike, you, that's not you. You can't shoot like that. Like, it's, it's no place to deal with emotions because the goal is winning, right? So it told me early on, like, feelings are, are fickle. Put them feelings aside. Them feelings aren't going to help you win. And you can do two things. You could either... You could either just take the L or you can just work on it and work on it. And a part of that being authentic and being real with you and giving it to you raw allows you to 
to get better at things that you may not have gotten better at, you know? Like, if I sugarcoat the fact that I can't shoot and I'm making a whole bunch of excuses, there's no excuses on a basketball court. It's either you produce or you get benched. It's either you produce or you don't. There's no excuses, there's no nothing. There's, there's, no, there's no politics. There's no, well, he scored two points and he scored 12, but I like him, so he's gonna get more minutes. It's not like that. You know, so I think, I mean, along with a lot of other things, you know, I don't I don't want this video to be too long. Maybe I can make a separate video just talking about, you know, all the things that sports have taught me. You know, I played football, baseball, basketball, and I feel like in, in all of their respective rights, they've taught me something a little bit different. I mean, a lot of things were instilled and a lot of them, are, a lot of similarities come across all of them, but there's different things that each of them has taught me. You know, most of the things I just talked about I guess mainly I'm pulling from basketball, but if I really think about it, it's the same thing with football, you know? But anyway, definitely a great video. Definitely provoked or some a lot of um, a lot of good thoughts and, and just really pulling from, you know, my sports days and really just I mean I'm I don't I don't I mean not that I don't play sports no more. I haven't played organized sports in a minute, you know, but from when I did play organized sports. Not that I don't want to, but either way. Um, so yeah, definitely like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like these type of videos. And I'll see you when I see you. Peace.